Uh, this is Thomas here, and this is going to be a test video for my fascial release in yoga. I've got a couple dogs over here that may join us. I'm going to spend about 30 minutes doing a few things. First thing we're going to do is just show some of the things that are useful to have. A softball, which is hopefully soft, a little bit squishy like this one. Alternatively, you can get one of these uh, balls. A uh, two-pounder is better. This is a three-pounder. I'd recommend a two-pounder for what we'll do. Two tennis balls in a sock. Very useful. They don't have to be in the sock, but it's useful. A golf ball. A tennis ball. A doweling. This is two feet, roughly two feet long. One and five sixteenth inch in diameter, sanded to be smooth. You can you can get all manner of blocks. I recommend a block of this proportion, a block of this proportion. If you can get this block made of this material, that's great, and this block made of this material, that's great. Uh, Speckle block, compressed foam block is nice, a blanket, and I'm sitting on a bolster. But you sit on whatever shape you need. These are all readily available, not super expensive. They can be very uh, beneficial for your myofascial work, your yoga work, any sort of work along those lines, Pilates, etc. So we're going to begin with just a few minutes of sitting. And I recommend doing two things while we're sitting. One is to uh, close the eyes, lightly bring your head up and back without causing the sway in your back. So my spine is neutral. Try to bring the head back and up to try and maintain the neutrality of the spine. The head is very heavy, so if my head is forward, it's causing a lot of strain on my back. So I'm going to bring it back. As you notice, I just inhaled. It makes it a lot easier for respiration, etc., to happen. This is much harder for the head. And you can just play with your body and notice. There it goes again. So you can see that. The other thing, so the eyes are closed. The head is adjusted. The body is happy. The knees please below the top of the hip bones, the ASIS, anterior superior iliac spine. You want these higher than these. And we wish to avoid the look of the ankle like this. The sickle ankle uh, is really worth uh, avoiding. So flexion or extension. For short sits, I extend in this plantar extension. Longer sits, I'd sit in a much more complicated, elevated, supported way for my meditation practice. But for simple sitting for a short period of time, I will sit like this. Eyes closed, adjustments of the knees, the height, the low back is inwardly curved if you touch it, again, above the ASIS. Now you should feel the ridges of the spinal muscles coming down, sticking out like mountains. The spine is inset like a river. It doesn't want to be a deep river valley. It doesn't want to be like a triceratops with now my vertebrae sticking out even, maybe even past my uh, spinal erector muscles. So a little pelvic tilting can be useful. To find that neutrality. Eyes closed, head up and back, spine, knees and hips, hands where you'd like them to be. Now we're just aware of our breathing. You can breathe intentionally if you want or just let the air come and go. Try and feel your breathing. Try and remain aware that you're breathing. And then to stabilize our pelvis and core and body, We'll just simply contract at the floor of the pelvis. So any muscles you can feel there, for example, anal sphincter muscle, muscles to stop yourself from peeing, muscles to stop yourself from passing gas, cervix muscle, etc. If you're able to just contract the floor of the pelvis, uh, that's great. So we're just going to contract and release these muscles. You could consider this Ashvini Mudra if you're contracting and releasing anal sphincter muscle which can be done in a number of ways, but we'll just do it meditatively, contracting, releasing, while remaining aware of our breathing. And I'd recommend doing this for 
uh, 5 to 15 minutes prior to the uh, beginning of your practice. We'll only do it for a few minutes in this video. So if you're watching this video and you want to go for longer, just press pause now. Continue with those practices. Eyes closed, which means Pratyahara in Sanskrit, the fifth limb of the eight limb practice as outlined in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Raja Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, Ashta Anga, eight limbs in Sanskrit. So that's Pratyahara, tuning the senses inwards by keeping the eyes closed, feeling the breath, sitting comfortably as we need to in all yoga postures, again deferring to the yoga sutras, stira, sukham, asana, the posture should be steady and easeful, feeling the breath, aware that we're breathing, staying present. And contracting, releasing, floor of the pelvis. Contract, release, contract, release. Any of those muscles, anal sphincter, cervix, kegel, pee stopping, gas stopping, floor of the pelvis. So if you want to go for longer, press pause. Otherwise, we'll do this just for about a minute here. So again, you could do that for longer. I recommend 5 to 15 minutes uh, uh, as you're beginning settling in. The contracting and releasing is very good for the parasympathetic nervous system, so it's very common. So we'll just move around a little bit, and uh, you can shake out the legs or give them a little something as you need to. The first thing we'll do is just a simple exercise to open up the fascia, starting at the plantar fascia. So if you look at my hand and pretend it's my foot, thumb is the big toe, or helix, baby finger is the baby toe. And we're going to roll, not from the toes, but from the ball of the foot, which I'll mark as the callus. It's from the big toe callus to the heel, heel, big toe. And we'll just do that for one minute. And then we'll move to the second toe, index toe, from its callus, its ball of the foot, to the heel and back. So we'll just do that. So a golf ball, they can, you can find them all over the place, thrift stores. So just lightly stand up, both knees are bent. And you'll just place the ball here at the callus of the big toe. And I'm just going to lightly roll. The quality that I'm looking for is comfortably uncomfortable. Again, thinking about the Yoga Sutras, Stira, Sukha, Asana from the Book 2 of the Sutras simply meaning that the practice, asana practice, the practice of living for that matter, should be comfortable and easeful. Not dulled by comfort as we tend to be, but allowing ourselves to experience some discomfort and being okay with it. Okay, so I'm just going to continue. If a golf ball is too much, uh, a tennis ball or a different shape that you like uh, will be useful. Walking barefoot is something I highly recommend. And it may be very unpleasant in the beginning, very difficult. So proceed slowly and compassionately. If the standing leg starts to get sore, just, of course, stop. Move a little bit and continue. So we'll move to the index toe, the next toe, and the same thing. I'm starting up on the toe, but at the ball of the foot, and just slowly, comfortably, steadily, Rolling, index toe, heel, heel, index toe. Now you may hear crunky, clunchy, all kinds of strange sounds. 
no problem. Slow and steady. We're breaking up the fascia, stimulating our whole body with the pressure points. So lots of detox happens when you work with the myofascia. A lot of um, free radicals in the body and, and toxins from the air, the food, the water, our lifestyle, psychic toxins as well, which uh, manifest as free radicals. Uh, we can get them released when we open up the fascia. So please drink a lot of water, uh, warm water ideally, at the end of this class or anytime. Okay, so let's again, whenever you need to, just take a, mi a minute. We're going to go to the middle toe. Same thing, middle toe through to the heel, heel to the middle toe. Now, of course, I'm saying about one minute. I'm not timing myself. You could do it for longer or shorter. Again, proceed slowly and steadily for the maximum benefits. We don't want to try and open up our entire fascia today. That, and it will do a disservice to our body. Nor do we just want to be going too quickly and not being mindful. So slow and steady. So I'm doing the middle toe, the ball of the, the foot at the middle toe, straight through the middle of the foot, as it were, to the heel, and back again. Pausing when you need to pause. And sighing every now and then. Sometimes the hands grip, sometimes the bum grips, the shoulders. You know where you grip, maybe you don't. Try and feel your body. And if you're gripping somewhere, ungrip again. We don't want to tighten someplace as we're loosening elsewhere. Okay, so we're going to do the next toe. I call it the ring toe, second to last toe from there, just on the inside of the outside arch, the lateral arch. And we'll roll the same way, back and forth. sign when you need to. Okay, and then we're going to move to the baby toe, just to this lateral arch. I find this one can be very intense. So as always, slow and steady, be patient. If you're able to practice with eyes closed, of course, close them. And again, about one minute is good. I'll pause there, but you could go for longer. Just explore, enjoy it. I'm just going to stand for a minute, fan out my toes as I can, and just compare the feeling now of my two feet in relation to each other. The one feels much more grounded, but you may feel all the way up that side of the body. We'll do one more thing. So again, I'll use my hand to demonstrate my foot. The heel is going to be on the floor, so this is on the floor. I'm going to start at the callus of the big toe and at the ball of the foot and then go to the next one, next one, next one, next one, and go back and forth like a pendulum ticker or a tick of a clock, grandfather clock. So the heel stays on the floor. I'm just weighting down a little bit the big toe callus and then I just turn my foot, as you can see, side to side along this transverse arch. This again can be very intense for people. Slow and steady, stira, steady, sukham, comfortable, asanam, posture. So we want to, again, comfortably and comfortable, enjoy the sweet pain quality. So again, this about a minute, and you could do it for a little bit longer, depending on your practice, your body. Listen to your body, please, more than my suggestions. Okay. So give it a little shake out and we'll just do a little round at the ankle of that foot. So I'm going to flip onto the knuckles of my toes and the nails and just do light little circles around and around. Good to work the joints. 
lubricate them, and then reverse the direction. Okay, a little shake out. And again, it's got good to pause. So I'm going to pause, fan out the toes. Maybe just take a moment. Try and smile so the body knows it's good. And I really feel a big difference, even though I do this regularly from that foot all the way up my leg, up into my body. So let's move to the left foot. We'll do the same sequence. So I'm going to start with the big toe callus, never going off the toes. You can if you want, not necessary. And I'm going to roll big toe heel, heel big toe, comfortably uncomfortable, approximately one minute. If the ball will roll and scooch a little bit, so be patient and just enjoy its little scoochings while you can try and maintain the line big toe through this medial arch, a very important arch. Helps keep our core midline, this arch. So we will roll big toe, heel, heel, big toe. hear the little sounds coming from my foot, and you may find those coming from yours as well. So again, about a minute. Taking a pause if you need to pause if that standing leg gets sore. Make sure you always have the knees bent slightly when doing these. Let's go to the index toe next. Index toe to heel, heel, index toe. to sigh. It's very useful. Okay, so let's uh, do the middle toe, right through the middle of the sole here, to the heel, and back again. with the gripping, mindful of the hands with the bum. Even, sometimes it's good even just to check. Sometimes we're not even sure if we are gripping. So you can check parts of your body and make sure they're relaxed. Okay, so let's do the second to last toe, the ring toe. If you work in an office, you may wish to bring, for example, a golf ball to work and periodically throughout the day just roll for uh, a little bit. It can be far less systematic as we than we're doing now, but little bits throughout the day will help. And we'll get into this more in uh, future videos. Okay. Let's do the baby toe. Lateral arch. Now then check position of the head. Okay, and all of this can be done with Pratyahara, eyes closed as you can for balance. If you need balance, of course use a wall. All these exercises are not about balance, so if you're rolling and a wall is, uh, is useful for you to use, uh, please use that. So again, we'll do the transverse arch in the left foot, starting at the big toe callus, and side to side. Now what you may see, depending on your body, is a little bit of whiteness on the top here. 
as I push down, there'll be a little white, and the knuckle may of that toe, as you go from side to side, may pop up a little bit over time, depending on how your fascia is at this moment. Okay, so we're going to go like this. Again, you could do this a little longer, but there we go. About one minute per of these six lines we've done. So they give a little thanks to the golf ball for helping you take a moment, give a little shake out, like the dogs do, a little stretch, and just enjoy some movements, and then let's suspend toes again and see how we're feeling. Nice inhales and exhales. Okay, so we've opened up the back line. Let's do a very simple exercise. Uh, asana practice that uh, is very good for the whole back line. This is Marji Asana Cow Cat. I recommend having hands like this as fists rather than this on the floor. You can also do tented fingers. Uh, a lot of wrist injuries happen, so feel free to double up the mat a little bit, or if you can, hitchhiking fists. So we'll just come down to the ground. If you do have this little block, let's just pop this block at this height in between my feet. And if you notice, the top of my foot here is off the floor. Okay, and then I'm just gonna bring myself, hands below shoulders, knees below hips, a little hug up of the body into itself, and then we move with our breath from the pelvis. So it's inhale, go through your back, try not to look forward, you can hear my throat. Exhale, and hit body's pulled up into itself. Move the pelvis first. Inhale. Try and make it be like a wave. Only go as far as the throat feels good. You can do and talk to yourself so you know for sure. Exhale. Feel sticky spots. I have a rather sticky back so I will find areas that uh, don't move as individually as others and my fascia work will help this. The block between my heels is being lightly hugged by my ankle bones and my eyes are lightly closed and I'm moving with very slow breathing. Okay, so you could do this again for longer. And we'll just pause there and just do a little, a little dance. Okay, so we'll, we'll transition do a little bit on our backs using this block, this block, and our strap. So I'm going to place this block at the suboccipital muscles just below the base of my skull here. The block will be on the floor. My skull will be here, just below the skull, and the floor will be here at the angle, you'll see. This thinner block will be placed in between my thighs, and I'm going to take my little Indian cotton band here, strap. I've tied it up such that when I pull just the loop part, you notice it doesn't undo itself. That's very important, so uh, make sure your strap is like that. So what I'm going to do, I'll stand up so you can see, but it's, it's, you can do this sitting down as well. I pop it up into my inner thigh, I take the strap, bring it up, and then I bind myself quite tightly. So when I squeeze out, you notice uh, the strap is resisting me. The block is in between my thighs. So we'll bring myself to the floor. That's why I do it uh, sitting. I recommend sitting. It's a bit can be difficult to come to the floor when bound. So you may want to continue um, doing this while sitting rather than coming down to the ground and maybe falling. Got my other block. I'm just going to slowly bring myself to the floor, like this. I'm going to take this block, place it under my head, just like this, just comfortable. Feet are below the knees like this. They're just as wide as the block between my thighs. I take the block and I turn it at an angle. See this? So it's now one angle on the floor, one angle below the occipital muscles. I have a light squeeze into the block and I just roll my hand slide from side to side. You may have to do little adjustments. So we're on the sub 
uh, occipital muscles. I try to relax with open mouth exhale and let's go a bit from side to side. You know you're in the right spot because it will feel uncomfortable. So we'll just do this again a few minutes. It's nice. Side to side, we'll do two variations. This one's very good for tight jaw, TMJ, headaches, etc., neck issues. Okay, so you can do that a couple more minutes as you like, still, or move from side to side. We're going to take the block again in the hand, and my left hand is going to turn the block lightly towards my left shoulder, so it becomes at a very slight angle, and I roll to my the base just below my left ear at the mastoid process, and again I can move a little bit. So it's another nice release of the back, the neck, and also a little bit of the front. So we're just going to again find your sweet spot, move a little bit, nod. Yes, and or no. Eyes can be closed. Bodies relaxing down into gravity. Okay, so you could do that a bit longer. Take the block, come back to the starting position, so it's right below the occiput at the four suboccipital muscles. Take a moment, feel into this left mastoid process area. the back body settling to the floor with gravity and then we'll take the block and do the same on the side turn it slightly to the right turn to the right again always a little hug into this block feeling my big toes and moving a little bit big inhales maybe the exhales little movements So again, we'll come back to neutral and just pause for a minute. Feel into the right side now, where we just were. So as we do more and more of these myofascial releases, make sure that you can smile, you can breathe um, when you're doing any of these releases. If either of those are not able to do, back off. And again, slow and steady, like the tortoise. Uh, who will win this race. The hare will generally lose. So the block can come away. Place it off the side with some thanks, reverend. Head can come down. And we'll just let it settle for a minute. Feel your body, hopefully neutral pelvic angle. And what we'll do is again, light squeeze with the block. We'll just let the head turn to the left, but my eyes will look right. And then I'll look both head and eyes to the ceiling. My head will look right as my eyes look left. And then I look again back at the ceiling. I'm going to repeat that with eyes closed a number of times. You can exhale to turn the head away. Inhale to turn the head back up. So you could do this a number of times. Try and feel down your back. As your head moves from side to side, feel the different muscles being used. Looking in the opposite direction the head is going can be difficult. This is a very nice thing taken from Feldenkrais, a great movement um, technique. Okay, and then we'll just again pause. Always remember to take pauses. Try not to be uh, going boom, boom, boom from one event to the other. Take a pause, breathe, feel before continuing. So we're working on the back, opening up the back. So let's do um, a couple things here just to work the back. So first we're going to decompress the pelvis using this block and strap. And uh, this is not to be done with a large effort, even an equal mild effort. So as I'm inhaling, I'm squeezing slightly outwards. The strap resists me. As I exhale, I exhale with a shh sound and I lightly squeeze in. Shh. I can squeeze the floor of the pelvis as we did earlier. 
and then I inhale and I open out. I'm really breathing into the back of my ribcage so I feel the inhale in my floor and as I exhale, shh, pulling up and in, belly to back. Inhale, breathing into the floor, and it's good to do this a number of times as well. This yeah, so will decompress the pelvis, stabilize the core, balance the inner thigh with outer thigh muscles, the adductors in versus abductors out. Generally our adductors are too weak and the abductors are too strong. Always searching for meaning outside of ourselves, abducting our own selves. So we want to adduct ourselves while still maintaining ability to abduct evenly, equally. So again, you could do that for longer. Let's stop there. Notice how you feel. Breathe into your back. You can have elbows on the floor, hands on the side ribcage, as you can see. Breathe into the side, so the hands move to the side, away. Exhale, you're playing yourself like an accordion. Inhale is about four or five seconds. Exhale, same length. Or you can make the exhale a little longer. Exhales can be through the mouth. Okay. So we've done cow cat on our hands and knees. We'll do cow cat on our back with Setu Bandhasana bridge. So it's going to be inhale. Hands can be anywhere. I'm, they're on my body now, so you, they're not in the way. It's pelvic tilting. Inhale, arch. I can slide my hand underneath my back now. Inhale. Exhale, tail to heels. Inhale, lift up. Try and keep the bum relatively relaxed. Come up for bridge. Light squeeze to the block. Exhale. Fully relaxed buttocks. Light squeeze to the block. Tucking down. A little pause. Inhale. Exhale. Belly to the back. Lengthen the low back to inhale for spinal extension, spinal lift. Say to Bandhasana, inhale up. Check your bum, is it gripping? Ungrip it. Exhale. Fully relax bum down. The height you make is not relevant. We are moving with comfort and ease, enjoying suppleness in our back. No striving. So we'll just do that one more time. And when you're down, again, take a moment. If it's comfortable for you, you can place the arms in the cactus shape. Otherwise, deep breathing on the sides, hands off the side. You decide. Okay, so let's take the strap and, and block away and just undo it. And find yourself slowly coming to sit. So we'll do one thing with the dowel for this muscle here anterior tibialis muscle. It's going to be a very sensitive muscle, so I'll offer a variety of ways to deal with this muscle. So you can have the dowel in hand and roll it. You can roll a little bit onto the arms as well. If you're rolling, also slide. Rolling, sliding. We're not going to touch the bones, just the soft tissue. Rolling, sliding. If you'd like some more, dowel goes onto the floor. Again, I recommend the hitchhiking fists. I'm making myself into a slight pigeon shape here. And I'm rolling. Slow and steady. This may be too much if you haven't done this uh, muscle before. Very intense muscle. You can rest in the spot, 
move slowly back and forth. You can roll quite the length of the lower leg here as you feel. So don't try and release this muscle all in one day. Slow and steady, be patient. Try and be barefoot as much as possible. And that will help a lot. Okay, when you need to, sigh. This can be very intense. Take a break when you need to take a break. Okay, so let's just pause there. Shake out the leg. Maybe drum roll the feet and a few cow cats. Again, inhale and exhale. Release the head. Lightly looking forward. I would say diagonally down is very nice. So I'll just do one more. Again, you can always do more. Okay. Let's do a little child's pose as transition. Trying to keep the legs as close together as possible. Top of the feet again, off the floor. If you need to widen out the legs, if you're pregnant, do so. If the top of the feet touch the floor, of course, you're fine. You can support the head with the hands, or the arms, or a block as you need to, making the fists. Try and compare the sides of your body. Okay, so let's do the other side. You could also do downward dog as a transition. So slide, roll. Both are good. If you do the pigeon version, it's good to also take a moment to slide so the different layers of muscle, the fuzz, the Gil Headley fuzz, will start to break up. So sliding and rolling, both please. So a little bit there, you can decide if you did the pigeon version, uh, do it again. Using the hitchhiking fist to protect the wrists. Lightly crossing over. And you may feel that one leg is very different than the other. That's just how we are sometimes. So if you find it intense, please do exhale long with the open mouth. And remember the rules. You can smile, be comfortable, and breathe. If you can breathe and you're like grimacing, slow down. Take your time, patience. Okay, so again, you could do that for longer. It's a quite an intense one. Lots of things we can use with the dowel. That's all we use the dowel for today. So again, we can shake the leg, drum roll it. And let's do downward dog this time. Same starting position as cow cat. Bum to heels, and then extend yourself up. Feel free to alternate, walk it out a bit and ground yourself when you're ready through the practice of downward facing dog or again child supported or unsupported okay so that's a bit of the lower leg let's move up a bit to our precious hips so here we're going to use a single tennis ball this can be done on your back or sitting i'll show the sitting version the tennis ball is going to be around my hip socket to begin with. And again, we're going to flex the foot so the foot, inner heel, remains smooth. A light flexion, nothing too strenuous, but we want to again avoid the sickle. So a little smoothness there. So I'll start with my right side. Tennis ball is here. I'm going to cross this leg over. Using my hitchhiking fist again, lift myself off the ground. Find the tennis ball and rest on it. There we go. And I can change the pitch here and I find a spot right there. And you're just going to try and again, sweet pain. There's a spot I can be with. And I'm just going to sit here for a little bit. I'm taking a little gaze at my uh, inner heel. It's smooth. And again, I'm just going to stay here for a little bit. I can roll around. This can also be done exactly the same position on our backs. So it would be like this. I'll switch feet here and the tennis ball is here. 
and you could roll around, or there it is, just find the sweet spot. So if you find the sitting up position too difficult, just do it lying on the floor. That's a very similar effect. And you could take advantage of being on the back by breathing into the floor. So this one can be very intense. So as with always, patience, slow and steady, being able to breathe and smile. So I'm going to find my little spot. There it is. Close the eyes and I'm just going to try and relax my body into gravity and let the muscles stop fighting gravity and stop fighting nature, life, and enjoy the moment. So here we go. Take a moment. Pause when you need to pause. When you need to. Okay, so again, you could do longer or shorter. Let's just take a moment. Take the legs out in front. You can wiggle them around a little bit. Get that little pat, pat. If you did, if you want to, again, for the fuzz, you could just slide a little bit around to get the muscles to slide on each other more and more effectively. So do the same thing, other side, either supine or sitting, mindful of the little flexion, popping yourself up. You may notice that one hip is profoundly or not, or somewhere along the continuum, different from the other. So I'm going to find a spot, there it is. Direct my breath there. And try and let that settle. So I'm just giving a bit of a survey today of what we can do with these shapes. It doesn't have to be this long. You can do these little things throughout your day. Again, if you work at an office or wherever you work, just bring a tennis ball with you and every now and then just go through this, uh, introduce it to your coworkers, and it uh, will really help your own physical health and probably the health of all beings around you. So again, feel free to change the angle like this as I'm doing. See how it feels. Okay. So the hips can be quite the zone of intensity. So again, thank you to the tennis ball. Tap it out. Take the tennis ball. Slide around. Okay, so there's lots more we can do with tennis ball, but we'll leave it at that for today. And the next we're going to do is the two tennis balls to have my little sock here. The dog, one of the dogs, not the ones here, who have been very good, uh, destroyed the sock. So the single sock is now with the two tennis balls inside. And if you're doing this at home or somewhere where you're okay with it, it's nice to take the shirt off because the rolling of the tennis ball sometimes uh, doesn't really get along so well with the t-shirt. The t-shirt gets bunched up. And so uh, I'll show you a general thing uh, that you can do. The key with the tennis balls is the tennis balls do not touch your spinal cord, do not touch your vertebrae. That's why they're spaced a little bit and you can roll up and down your spinal erectors. So I recommend, again, you take a block, the cork one, I'm going to take this up this one here, pop it in between my legs to make sure I stay hugged in. I'm going to take my shirt off just so you can see the, the unbunchability. What I do is, I'm just going to bring my feet the same starting position we did earlier. Tennis ball is going to be on the floor behind me. Feet on the floor. I'm just going to position the tennis balls. And for example, I could just lie here. This could be just all I need to do. Maybe little movements. Maybe I lift up and I move the tennis balls. So this is up to you. You could be up by your shoulders. Uh, you can be anywhere. What I'm going to do is support my head. And I'm going to work a little bit the upper back by the shoulder blades towards the base of the neck. About there. You can feel it. Real lots of stuff going on there. Right there, I could just sit here, bum is on the floor, bum is off the floor, you decide, <sighs> breathing, 
roll. Now, if you had the shirt on, it'd be the shirt would get bunched up. So just backwards and forwards, or pick a spot and just sit there. Remember not to have the tennis balls ever touch the spine. So we're just rolling like this. There's another spot, I could just stay here. <sighs> Try and let go, or make little movements around. So you can pick the part of your back that you feel you'd like to work on. Focus on that, or just try and do the whole back, again, as you want. So you can do that for longer, that's just a demo. I'm going to take the tennis balls away, release some tension in my back, so let's, let's again do supine cow cat. Do a slight variation this time, taking it from Thomas Hum Hanna's somatic, I'm going to take my hand under my head, and it's going to be inhale, arch, exhale, curl, head lifts. Inhale, I'm lengthening by lightly pulling my head, exhale, I relax. And then I inhale, arch, cow, and then a modified cat, lifting my head entirely with my arms coming up. Breathing, inhale to my back, lengthening the neck, head down as I exhale. Inhale, exhale. No strain, no aspirations. Inhale, coming down. Exhale. Inhale, one more time. Again, you can do these more. Exhale. Ah, there we go. The block again is there just to keep us hugged in. Now we're going to enter into relaxation. I recommend this is the, one of the most important things you can do. Stay warm, so maybe the shirt comes back on, or a blanket if you have a blanket. One of the, a great way to hydrate your body is rest. Another great way to hydrate your body is to release the pressure points, which you might have felt today with some of these techniques. Those pressure points tend to not have as much circulation going through them because they're tight when you open them. Of course, you become rehydrated with the vasculature, with our blood. So, uh, you can drink as much water as you want, but if the t t tissues are tight, it's like trying to get water into very, very dry soil, or sand, or earth, cracked earth, It'll, the water, as we know, just runs away. So we want to open ourselves up with these techniques, and we can hydrate each other. So, what we do for corpse, Shavasana, is take the bolster, Place it underneath the hinge of your knees like this, lying flat. Adjust if you need to the angle of your pelvis. Tuck the shoulders. Someone can do it for you. It's very nice. Tank, uh, feet onto the bolster. Lift up. Here comes the dog. I tuck my shoulders. Do a little bridge. I exhale. Over there, say so. I lower down. There you go. That sailor. Stand out the legs, big toes touch each other. Again, cut the head, check that you're in a straight line. If not, adjust, lower back down, hands off to the side, let the feet open up. A few deep breaths. And then we do what we did in the beginning. We're just lying here now. Eyes are closed, pratyahara, tuning inwards. Aware of the breathing. And that's all we do. The mind will wander and we come back. We feel our breathing, we're aware of our breathing, we come back. It's good to do this for from a minimum of five minutes to as long as you want. 20 minutes is great. And work towards being able to have continuous awareness as best you can. So if you need to set a timer, uh, it's good to have a timer for Shavasana. When you're coming out of Shavasana, please stretch and wiggle as you need to. And very 
slowly, you can bring the knees in and give yourself a little hug. Roll around a little bit, maybe one leg, the other leg, and then lightly roll to a side. Give thanks for yourself as you are. The top leg will become straight, top hand will push, and you come up. And then get a drink, and of course, after something like this, please proceed slowly with the rest of your day. If you have time, ideally, you would leave time at the end of your yoga and maya fascia ease and release session to once again sit in a way that's going to be good for your body, head and neck up and back, smiling, aware of breath. Turn any lights off, maybe a blanket or a shawl, hands up, hands down. Maintain awareness of breathing. For again, 5 to 10, 15 minutes. Carry on with your day. So thank you. I wish you well. Any questions, feel free to contact me through the website beyondconflict2communion.com.